the Asus Spatha mouse is marketed as a mouse for MMO gamers. But with its programmable 12 button design, it got me wondering, would this mouse also have a place in the world of simulators? When I initially heard about this mouse, I dismissed it as an MMO mouse, and MMOs are not something I play. I've used an Asus Gladius mouse for over two years, I'm really happy with it, and I love the way it feels and performs, and I'm very picky when it comes to mice. On the Gladius, I used both thumb buttons, but then I realised that if I had more, I could probably find a practical use for them. So I asked Asus to send me over one of the Spatha mice to try it out. In the box, apart from the warranty and manual, is the Spatha mouse itself. Also you get a rather nice carry case, the wireless receiver and charging dock, a 1 meter rubber USB cable which connects to the charging station, two Japanese made Omron switches, I'll talk more about those in a minute, two ROG logo stickers, a 2 meter braided USB cable, this one connects to the mouse and doesn't twist, and a star headed screwdriver. In terms of features, it has a magnetic docking station which charges the mouse and also features an LED indicator showing the current battery charge level. It has 12 programmable buttons which are configured using the ROG Armory software. It has customizable RGB lighting, which looks absolutely beautiful. The mouse is made of a magnesium alloy chassis, and it has an 8200 DPI and works in both wired and wireless modes. It will perform differently in wireless mode, however. In wired mode, it will poll at an impressive 2000 Hz. This drops to 1000 Hz in wireless mode, which is still pretty high. There's a DPI switch, which allows you to switch between two different DPI settings. There are changeable Omron switches. One set is more clicky than the other. Changing the switches is a fairly straightforward process. Using the supplied screwdriver, you simply remove four screws from the bottom, pop the cover off, remove the two existing switches, pop in the new ones, put the cover back on and screw it back together and replace the rubber screw covers. The ROG Armory software which is used to control the mouse is very well featured and pretty intuitive. It starts off with the power tab here. This shows the uh, battery power status and when to go to sleep after so many minutes and also when to start flashing to show you've got a low battery. Then comes the calibration tab. Uh, in here you can basically select the different type of surface that you might be using on so you can choose from the presets and go for a, a cloth or a plastic or a glass surface and so on. This helps with it. Uh, sensing movement of the mouse. Now I have the lighting. The lighting is uh, very impressive. Uh, you can either control individual aspects on the mouse, be it the logo, the scroll wheel, or the side buttons, uh, or you can just sync all areas, in which case it will do all three. Uh, you can choose different effects. You can choose between a static color, such as uh, the, any, any out of the spectrum you can choose as the static color. You can have it cycle through a spectrum of colors, which you can define here. You can put it onto trigger mode so that when you click a mouse it changes colour. You can have it on breathing, in which case it oscillates between two, two colours that you choose. You can tell it to go random and let it pick the colour. And finally, you can make it show the colour based on the current battery life, all the way from green being full down to red being low. Then there's the actual performance of the mouse. Uh, as I said, it has a DPI switch, so you can have uh, the DPI with the, with the light switched off or the DPI with the light switched on. Uh, 1500 for me seems to be quite a decent kind of DPI setting, but if you want something more accurate, perhaps when you're uh, sniping in a shooter, you could bring that right down to say uh, as low as you want, maybe 500 or 1000, and then simply press the button, the DPI of the mouse will change and suddenly you'll find that uh, you have much finer control over your aiming. Uh, it has angle snapping, which personally uh, I don't use. This allows the mouse to snap between different locations on the screen. Uh, you can change the polling rate in wired and wireless mode. I've gone for 1000 hertz in wired mode, and that seems to be absolutely fine. 
500 in, in wireless, but you could bring it all the way up to 1000. Note the difference in maximum uh, polling rates here. Wide mode goes all the way up to 2000. Wireless is stuck at 1000 limit. You've got the acceleration and deceleration, which I completely turn off. Uh, this kind of controls how much acceleration it has at the beginning and end of movement. I don't want any. I want pure uh, movement from my hand mapped into whatever I'm doing. And then finally, you have the button response here, which, which dictates how long it is before it detects a button click in between each press. You've then got macros, which you can define. You can hit the record button and record any sequence of keys you like. Uh, and then over in the button mappings here, you can choose a macro that you've defined. Now, this is quite feature rich. Uh, there's a top view which allows you to configure all the buttons across the top of the mouse and the side view which allows you to conf configure all the buttons down the side. Quite simply, when you choose one of the buttons, you, you decide what happens. It could be a mouse function such as a click or a scroll. Uh, it could be a window shortcut uh, to perhaps close an app or copy and paste. It could be a multimedia, volume up, volume down, skip track, that kind of thing. Uh, a macro, which you've picked back there. Or finally, a keyboard function, in which case you just press a key and it will take that key. And finally, you have different profiles over here. So you can have uh, multiple profiles. You can also hotkey switch them on the mouse between the different profiles. You can even bind them to a game. For example, I've bound this one here to Train Simulator. And when I select Train Simulator, uh, you will note that I've mapped these buttons here. So that the top buttons here do acceleration and deceleration. Uh, the middle buttons go operate the reverser and the lower buttons operate the braking. Uh, with this setup just here, I could control most of the train's functions from just my mouse and do nothing else with my left hand. You can of course configure the buttons on top to do whatever you like. Uh, the side and the top buttons are configured independently. And that is the ROG Armory software. Very, very well featured. So what do I think of it as a mouse? Well, it took me a little bit of time to adjust my grip, uh, my muscle memory and all that, but I realized that the, the thumb rests naturally on the shelf below the six buttons. Uh, and the mouse can be used either in a palm or a claw grip. I'm personally a palm grip kind of person. Uh, it fits neatly and snugly in my hand, just like the Gladius mouse did. It's a very nice looking mouse, particularly with the RGB lighting. It's heavier than most mice though, which gives it a kind of a solid feel, but it also means that uh, it has a little bit more inertia when you come to move it around your desk. It's very accurate. I tried it in various software on various surfaces and it performed flawlessly. Although in wired mode, it did feel just that little bit more precise on small mouse movements. As for the buttons, well, the six buttons are surprisingly easy to get used to. The lower two are the easiest and quickest to access, uh, assuming you rest your thumb on the shelf like I do. The upper two uh, are quite big and easy to click. The middle two are perhaps the, the most difficult because they're so small. Uh, and you have to, you know, trying to press them in a hurry would actually be a little bit more tricky. The two buttons on the left of the index finger, though, I found these to be the, the most awkward to press. So I would probably not map those to it to anything that I needed to access quickly. So how can this mouse be used in simulators? Well, where I found the mouse works best in simulators is where you find yourself reaching for the mouse fairly frequently. Since a mouse is quite small, it sits neatly alongside your control, like your wheel or your flight stick or whatever. And I found that the mouse is often used to control the camera in simulators. I do this in flight sim, I do it in train sim. Uh, I, most certainly anything where I have an external view, like an external view of the plane or the truck or the bus, I almost always reach for the mouse and move the camera around. If I'm flying, I might be holding a flight stick, but I will grab hold of the mouse to look around the cockpit uh, to click buttons and that kind of thing, even to zoom the camera uh, or click switches. The programmable buttons on the spather, I think, could easily be used to switch between different camera views and to zoom in and out, or even just to operate the aircraft. You could definitely find a use for those buttons. With Train Simulator, um, most people tend to use a keyboard and mouse, or even possibly a controller like an Xbox One controller. Personally, I use keyboard and mouse. And whilst the WASD keys are fairly natural for the left hand to, to cover, having to leave the mouse with the right hand to operate the braking controls uh, on the keyboard is not terribly convenient. Instead, I worked out that I could map the thumb keys of the mouse to various train and locomotive brakes, and that way my left hand could stay on the keyboard and my right hand could stay on the mouse, and that worked really well. 
with truck driving, I know a lot of people who use mouse steering. If you're one of those people that steers with the mouse, then you could map the buttons on the mouse to the parking brake or the horn or the lights or something like that. Some people drive with the keyboard and look around with the mouse, so they're doing the camera thing. Myself, I use a wheel, I use a G27 wheel, but um, I use the mouse to control the external camera. And I still find that I don't have enough buttons. Even on my G27, I don't have enough buttons to map all the different controls of the truck. So I found myself reaching over to the keyboard around my wheel. Instead, I could map some of those controls onto those buttons on the mouse, which is much easier to just quickly get hold of with your right hand. Same thing with the bus simulator like OMSI and Fernbus. Same thing applies. I think where this mouse is least of use in simulators is racing simulators. Fact of the matter is, you're, you're going to be sat there racing or rallying, whatever you're doing, and you're not really going to take your hands off the controller to ever reach for the mouse. In those situations, I don't think this mouse will offer you any benefit, but definitely, you know, particularly in train and flight sim and in truck sim and bus sim, I think that you can definitely find a use for those buttons. So what are the upsides and what are the downsides of this mouse? Well, it's well built, it looks beautiful, it's especially gorgeous with the RGB lighting. The angular lines of this thing uh, means it looks great on your desk and there's plenty of places to grab hold of with your hands. It's very comfortable to use. Wireless or wired option gives you the flexibility, uh, depending on your own personal preference. I've been using it wirelessly, but when I switch to like a shooter or something, I plug the cable in. The extra buttons definitely come in handy in most simulators I play, although it does take a little bit of time to work out how to get the best use out of the buttons. The mouse is targeted at MMO players. It certainly has its uses in those kinds of games, but those buttons are useful no matter what game you play. If you play FPS games, the buttons can be used for easy access to different weapons. Uh, even if you're not playing a game uh, on your desktop, you could use these buttons to launch applications or copy, paste, control your media player, all kinds of uses. If you have limited desk space and you can't clamp a wheel on your desk, then maybe a spather with those extra buttons would actually help you quite a bit. Downsides, really, you can't ignore the cost of this mouse. This is not a cheap mouse, it's a premium mouse. It's also heavier than normal mice due to the magnesium alloy chassis. It weighs 179 grams, whereas a Gladius mouse weighs 116 grams. That, that alone might affect your performance if you play twitchy shooters such as Counter-Strike GO, but I was fine playing uh, first-person stuff like Rainbow Six Siege, no problem at all. For simulator users, however, that should not be a problem. Uh, a couple of the buttons, particularly the ones near the index finger, I found are a little bit difficult to click. But other than that, I think the cost is the main downside of this mouse. I would like to see the cost lowered a little bit to make it more competitive against some of the other mice out there. In conclusion then, my go-to mouse for a couple of years has been the Asus Gladius. But this mouse performs just as well and offers more benefits. The price will put people off and the weight will bother some people. Myself, I can really find uses for these buttons in simulators, but it's going to take me some time to work out the best mappings. I see this mouse as enhancing what I already have. Uh, if you're the kind of person that's just building up your simulator controllers, then you would most certainly buy a steering wheel or a flight stick first before thinking about buying a mouse such as this. But this mouse makes a nice addition to your controller inputs and it can be used across all simulator and non-simulator games. As I said though, the benefits vary depending on what you play. That concludes my look at the Asus Spather Mouse in the world of simulation games. Please give me a like if you found the video useful.